Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. began you doing political commentary for the media speech. We are doing the massive Fukushima show, and as you all know, uh, that's the one that gets the shares. That's the one that gets uh, most of the people having found the show, and that, that's good. That's, that's what makes most people find the show, I should say, and that is good um, because it's important. It has been brought to my attention that there are some people who have no idea exactly what the Fukushima disaster was and why it matters so much. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time on that because I think it matters. Uh, remember, you can donate to the show at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can do that through PayPal. And now's a good time for me to say that Mrs. Uh, Miss Ricciardi, as people trickle in, uh, Miss Ricciardi, you have won the contest. So I need you to let me know out of the 12 Dunce Cap of the Month award shows that happened. Just go to my site, search Dunce Cap of the Month. All for the last 12 that's happened, what was the dumbest of the year? You get to pick. She's listener of the year. She donates. She listens. She comments. Is she won? Mrs. Ricky already let me know what you think the Dunce Cap of the year should be. And that's who's going to win it. Um, all right, guys, in 2011, March 11th, as a matter of fact, for those of you that like numbers, um, an earthquake, a 9.0, triggered a massive tidal wave that washed over a nuclear power plant with four units active. There were six, but two of them were undamaged uh, offline as well, um, as far as we know. The earthquake triggered the initial meltdown, not the tidal wave. And that's important because there are a lot of people that say that uh, this could never happen in other parts of the world because it was triggered by a tidal wave. And perhaps there's, a, there's not any way to for a tidal wave to hit the nuclear power plant where you're near. Maybe you live near one that's by a great lake. Well, the earthquake alone triggered the initial meltdown. It hit so hard. And it was predicted that that was going to happen. But General Electric, who was TEPCO, decided that it was it was better for the bottom line if you went ahead and we faced those risks and just, just pretended that the earthquake could never happen. Just pretend that it doesn't really matter, that it could never really strike, when the geological data had told people that it was going to. And scientists warned people, do not build this power plant here, for if you do, you are risking a disaster the likes of which the world has never suffered before. And that's what we're seeing here. Unfortunately, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Now that it has happened, there's a massive die-off in the Pacific Ocean such as never been seen before. There are no tuna. There are there is nothing pulled out of the Pacific Ocean that isn't all but glowing. They can't find one tuna without radiation levels, which they're claiming are safe. And we'll get into this later, but they're not. What they've done in order to save the tuna industry and to save the fishing industry and to save face for the nuclear power industry and big players like General Electric, which TEPCO is, which is why you should never donate or uh, be in mutual funds or own their stock or, nor support them in any way. Uh, General Electric decided that it was going to be a remarkable idea to open this plant. They wanted to save face. So what they're doing is they're raising the levels of what is safe. So let's say that, well, we, we know from Dr. Chris Busby that there is no safe dosage of radiation. It doesn't exist. But Let's say here, most people do not get sick, do not get cancer, or, you know, for the most part, at this level and beneath it. They raised it to this level. And then, whenever numbers are below this, they're saying that it's safe. See a problem with that? That's what's being done just in order to save the bottom line, friends. So let's take a look, now that we've, now that we've given you some kind of an insight as to what this is, that may yet create the some of the biggest nuclear mishaps still to come. I mean, they can't even get into some of the reactor buildings. They don't have the technology to even get in. So, wh what could go wrong? 
Well, for one thing, another earthquake could hit that area. And if it does, it's going to fall over like uh, Lincoln logs on a jackhammer. And I think it's important to take a look at the fact that people such as myself who have been showing you data and people like uh, Dr. Chris Busby, Lauren Maway, Dr. Helen Caldicott, these people that are showing you that these problems are not done in that area and that the ring of fire in the area near Japan and beyond it, the, the earth in total in some ways, and we'll get into that, is experiencing a time of activity such as never been seen. It's almost biblical here. And this is from the Daily Mail. Japan is hit by a powerful earthquake near the Fukushima radiation disaster zone. A powerful earthquake hit the preliminary magnitude of 5.0 has hit the east coast of Japan's Fukushima prefecture in the center of the country today, according to the uh, Japan's Meteorological Society. Now, this is dated. It's the 23rd. But look, the, in November, the quake struck at 11.30 p.m. local time around an hour and a half ago from when this was printed, with Japanese authorities describing it as a strong shake. It hit close to the Fo Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Ukuma, an earthquake initiated a tsunami there in 2011. I just described what that did. So let's think about this for a moment. We'll just let common sense kick in here for just a second. It's, according to them, going to take between 35 to 40 years to clean up the Fukushima disaster site. Of course, they, don't, like I said, they don't have the technology to even get close to it. Mankind cannot build machinery, cannot build robots that can withstand the radiation for over an hour or two. Look it up. It's a matter of public record. It's very easy to find. And yet we're going to shut this plant down. Also, uh, the this, this, Storage pool, if you don't know, imagine that this jar here is full of radio, radio, radioactive fuel. Now, if anything earthquakes this and it was to topple, it would render massive sections of the globe uninhabitable. And it would be so bad that they would not be able to hide it like they are now by skewing the numbers. That wouldn't be an option because the severity would be so intense that there would be no way of hiding what had happened. That's the predicament that these fuel pools are sitting on. Two and three stories in the air holding the deadliest elements known to exist in the world which is the spent fuel. Now, they had a 9.0 in 2011. They've had a number of quakes between 4 and 7 since then. And all over the world, earthquake activity is gearing up. It's getting bigger and more severe. It's becoming more dangerous all over the world. And to that, the fact that there's a vested inf interest in the corporations that run these things. Westinghouse, DuPont, General Electric, TEPCO. They have a vested interest in hiding how toxic this is. And an earthquake at a 9.0 and an 8.9, that's not one, that's not a percentage point difference. That is 10 times, it, the, an 8.1 and an 8.2, an 8.2 is 10 times as bad. It's not normal decimal math there when you're dealing with earthquakes. So if you hear a 7 and a 7.2, that's terrible. A 7.2 is 20 times worse than a 7.1. And we're seeing these numbers just rattle off as if they're no big deal while the entire health of at least the Northern Hemisphere, if not the entire globe, rests on the answers that we come up with to get this plant shut down. And that, that cannot be overstressed. Um, IAEA.org, Japan reports on conditions at TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, December 7th, 2018. Now here is where 
Any thinking person would lose all respect for this company. Listen to this two paragraph blurb here. <clears throat> On December 7th, 2018, Japan provided the IAEA with a copy of a report and there's a link to it here. On the discharge record and the seawater monitoring results at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station during November, which the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has sent to all international missions in Japan. The report contains information on discharges from the sub-drain and groundwater drain systems paused, which means the plant is still leaking like a balloon with a hole in it, like a water balloon with a hole, a pinhole in it as well as groundwater bypassing conducted during the November during the month of November. In both cases, in advance of the action, TEPCO analyzes the quality of the groundwater to be discharged and announces the results. Oh, well, they're nice and open, right? These results confirm that the radiation level of sampled water are substantially below operational targets set by TEPCO. That's great until you remember what I showed you with the paper a second ago, right? It's safe, like they're saying here. Well, they've raised the numbers to here. And now that they are below that, they're saying that it's safe and that they're containing it well and that there's no danger to people. Why? The Olympics surfing, trying to get the, f do you realize that there are people buying Fukushima food in the world? Do you realize that they are sending it to China and China is not labeling it and feeding it to people? And some of that very likely makes it onto the dinner tray when America buys food from China. This stuff matters, friends. It matters a lot because these are you people that I'm not afraid to die. If you have it, something kill somebody. Bullshit. That's not the way that works. First of all, you're sick all the time. Your kids are sick all the time. It affects all of you. It's not just you. And then maybe you get heart disease 10 years earlier than you would have. You get trouble seeing, you have trouble regulating your sugar levels, you have trouble with your thyroid, and then maybe when you're in your 60s, well, not even that old, then you start developing cancers and things, maybe sooner. Depends on how much of it you were exposed to, how much of it you ate, whether or not there was a hot particle in it, which is a condensed radionuclide, and you can look up um, the hot particles, Chris Busby, you can search and he'll give you a whole report on it. It's on the internet. It's free. He's a doctor. He's a physicist. He knows what he's talking about. These are, this is what's being done to us on a daily basis. And I don't think a lot of people take the time to really give it the attention that they should. Because if they did, they would pull their investment money out of these markets as quickly as possible. Because remember, the only reason the nuke industry lives is because they're subsidized by the government. Because basically the nuclear bombs that do exactly what uh, Fukushima has done, left a, a neutron star, for lack of better descriptions, burning in the center of the earth. Or burning towards, I should say, the center of the earth. And uh, again, a lot of that is speculation in terms of how deep it can go. But once it hits the water table, which to some degree it may have already done, the problem is here. And you keep, these, these don't dilute in the ocean. They simply get absorbed into the food that we eat. Anchorage Daily News, for those of you that think it doesn't matter in the U.S., 7.0 earthquake aftershock strike structure, uh, excuse me, take two, strike south central Alaska damage reported across the region. You know, you know what, they managed to get through this, I think, without any loss of life that may have gone up since I've seen this, so don't quote me for sure, but no loss of life. And they've got most of their roads and that already repaired because they have prepared. We'll get into this a little bit. They prepared in depth for this to happen. They knew that they were in an earthquake zone, which is good planning. Very good planning. Um, some of it was set forth, I'm sure, by Sarah Palin when she was in office and has been built upon ever since. They didn't have a nuclear power plant to worry about, which is why they managed to escape from this unscathed. And when this area, when this system trickles down and starts hitting California, you're going to find that nuclear power plants are going to be going bright red and 
by then it's going to be too late for large swaths of the U.S. to do anything, and the overall health and cancer rates of every single American will go through the roof in ways that in some ways are worse than a nuclear war. It has been said that in Japan, it would have been better if there had been a small-scale nuclear war that just ended, as opposed to having this power plant just steaming off and uh, trickling off toxins since 2011. It has done more damage in terms of nuclear poisoning than a nuclear war. This is mathematical fact. A 7.0 earthquake jolted Anchorage and the rest of South Central Alaska on a Friday, from when this was written, crackling and uh, collapsing roads and highways, damaging buildings, knocking out power, and sending people scrambling outside and under furniture. The shaking left many homes a mess, and aftershocks continued through the night and into Saturday morning. They are still getting upwards to thousands of aftershocks per day. Yes, I said thousands per day. Yes, that's what I said. Um, I, it is trickling down a bit now, but uh, people would say ducking under tables, avoiding glass, and going outside. Do you think that would have been possible if they'd have lived near a nuclear power plant? Because I somehow think that probably would have been a very bad idea. They'd be looking at cancers 15 or 20 years down the line. After 15 or 20 years of being deathly sick, catching every cold that comes down the line and not understanding why. Okay, this is exactly what's happening. Yeah, this is the UAF, the uh, Alaska Earthquake Center. December 8th, 1.7, 1.9. 1.5, 2.7, 2.4, 2.5, 2.0, on, and this is the longest list of earthquakes that you've ever seen. Some of them almost as high as a magnitude 3. Do you understand what's happening, people? This entire area is becoming more active than ever, and we have learned nothing from Fukushima. But we have nuclear power plants littering the West Coast of the U.S. at a time when everything west of California is shaking and quaking more than ever. And clearly that would apply to the north with Alaska. Okay, this is from The Verge. Over the past six months, a less groundbreak... Oh, wait, let me, let me go up to a higher part of this as a matter of fact. Let's start at the top, if we were to... How Alaska fits its earthquake-shattered roads in just days. Uh, the population of 300,000 people spread across 1,900 miles. It's an area larger than Rhode Island. Anchorage uh, last week was hit. Asphalt destroyed. Uh, broken, jagged depressions of rubble. There's more quakes than any other state in the Union, and even they are seeing them not just more frequently, but much stronger, and that's both very important. A rapid response to damage in Anchorage shows how investing time and money into preparations for these kinds of large infrastructure hobbling events can pay off in the long run, even when there is no way to tell when and where a disaster would strike. Well, doesn't that seem like something that should be taken into consideration then when you're dealing with a nuclear power plant? Let me go to screen share. I haven't done that for my YouTube listeners yet. Doesn't that seem like something that would be important to maybe not litter nuclear power plants up and down the oceans? Oh, they want the easy access to the water because it makes cooling them easier. So we're going to put a bomb and the fuse is going to be a random earthquake or tidal wave right on the coast because it's good for the bottom line. This is crazy, friends. Um, the largest earthquake ever recorded in the country shook Alaska in 1964 in Anchorage. So there's a, there's a long history of it happening and it looks like the entire area, it's all trickling down. Over the past six months, a less groundbreaking development also helped prepare the teams on the ground for the moment. In March, a truck slammed into a bridge on the only major road connecting Anchorage to one of its suburbs, shutting down the highway for days. So they're used to springing into action, which is all well and good, my friends. I'm just saying that this there are people in California that are thinking that this is what's going to happen for them. 
and they're factoring out the nuclear power plants. They're not thinking about what the final result of that's going to be. And that, friends, brings us to the dumb of the day. Let me remind you, friends, as we get near Christmas, I know, I know, I know, money is strapped. And the last thing you're doing is thinking about uh, donating to a radio or a political commentary host. But do me a favor and do so at the correct views of Hotmail.com through PayPal. Because all the money you give me goes to the research, goes to the time it takes to post these, goes to mailing out the dunce cap, which happens every month. Well, we have the dunce cap of the month on Saturday. I'm waiting for Miss Ricky Arden to let me know what the dumdy of the dunce cap of the year is. And uh, we have a lot of fun here. We give a lot of information out here, but it costs something to do. And uh, I think if you think the work I do is worth it and the time I put into it is worth it, then please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Dundee of the day is going to large swaths of scientists who are not taking the time to more properly figure out exactly what this is. New York Post, nobody knows why the earth just rang like a bell. Now, this reminds me of uh, the silliness of uh, a rock star Ace Fraley from Kiss. I don't know how many of you know this, but he, he recently fired his whole band, and he had the, one of the best bands I've ever seen as a unit live. Uh, he had the bassist from the cult, who is Primus kind of good. And uh, I don't know what Ace is doing. I think he's lost his mind. Dumbest move I've ever seen anyone do. Well, he was talking about, you know, Space Ace. He was talking about somebody saying that they dropped a wrench on the moon and it sounded like it rang as, as if it were a bell. Now, I remember thinking how unbelievably dumb that was. But I'm now looking at this and know that isn't what just happened. But I thought to myself, if Ace had been right, and let's face it, Ace hasn't been right for a minute. If Ace has been had been right, everybody would be bending over backwards to study it. Something almost as strange has happened, and it's a clear sign that there has been a massive fluxing on the tectonic plates, which cause earthquakes. The, the, or, or for those of you that don't know, the Earth, of course, is set up in layers, and the layers shift on what is called plates, and it makes the ground move, which we call earthquakes. Well... The amount of apathy that this is getting, I mean, if you don't believe in the great cover-up at some point, then maybe you're part of it, because it's so obvious. Listen to this. Seismic sensors just picked up the event originating near the island between Madagascar and Africa. Then alarm bells started ringing as far away as Chile, New Zealand, and Canada. I say Chile because I don't want to say chili. There's never anybody here to cook for me, and it's always chili. And I never have any good chili. Hawaii, almost exactly on the other side of the planet, also picked up the event. Now, let that sink in for a minute. Nobody knows what it was. Meteorite, submarine, volcano, nuclear test? I don't think so. Or I've seen anything like it, said National Geographic. Uh Columbia University seismologist Goran Estrom as saying it doesn't mean that in the end the cause of them is exotic. At the center of the mystery is a tiny island of Mayotte, positioned about halfway between Africa and Madagascar. It says that it's been subjected to a swarm of earthquakes since May. Most have been minor, but the biggest on May 8th was the largest in the island's recorded history, topping a magnitude 5.8. So meanwhile, let's think about this. We're watching this heat up all over the world in terms of activity, but you still got the boneheads in Iran wanting to build a nuclear power plant in Bashar, which people think is just prime for a Fukushima-sized earthquake. So even if they were peaceful, and they're not, even if they were, building an earth, building a nuclear power plant there is utterly out of the question. The earthquake swarm began to decline before the mysterious ringing was detected earlier this month. Um, Extrema, who specializes in unusual earthquake, earthquakes, how do you get into that? I'm a specialist in unusual earthquakes. I get paid a lot of money because they only need me twice a lifetime. Anyway, points out much about the November 11th event as weird. Again, another 11. 
It is as though the planet rang like a bell, maintaining a low-frequency monotone as it spread. Earthquakes, by their very nature, usually register as short, sharp cracks. As tensions in the Earth's crust suddenly release, pulses of clearly identifiable seismic waves radiate outward to where the slippage occurs. The first signal is called a primary wave, high-frequency compression waves that radiate in bunches. Then come secondary waves. It says these are high-frequency waves that tend to wiggle more. Only then comes the surface waves. These are slow, deep rumbles, tend to linger, and can circle the Earth several times. On November 11th, the event is notable in that no primary or secondary waves were detected. Now, that sort of breaks the laws of physics. That's like punching water, getting a spike, and then not getting any ripples. Now, for those of us who have insisted that the laws of physics are not applying as they used to, for those of us who have dared to dabble into the Mandela effect, this strikes us as kind of interesting. National Ge <clears throat> All that registered was a deep, resonant surface wave, and it didn't rumble as an earthquake surface waves tend to. Instead, it maintained a much cleaner, almost musical frequency. God said if he uh, was in praise, the very rocks would do it. National Geographic reports the French Geological Survey suspects a new volcano may be developing east of the Mayotte. While the island was, or Mayotte, I don't know, while the island was created by volcanic activity, it has been dormant for more than 4,000 years. The French believe the weird ringing may have been generated by the movement of magma some 30 miles off the coast and in deep underwater. Uh, this is supported by GPS sensors detecting that Mayotte has moved two inches to the southeast. So it moved two inches in five months. This is a big deal, friends. So... What we're seeing here is definitely an increasing in Earth activity. We might be seeing something borderline supernatural in terms of the way the physics didn't react the way that physics are supposed to. It's hard to say, friends, but I do know this. I know that the continuance, the continued reliance, I should say, on nuclear power is a disaster that will ring our bell before it's done. We need to do everything in our power to not only get the nuclear power plants that are active shut down and uh, never again used, but we need to figure out where we're going to store what we already have, and we need to make damn sure we're not opening any more of them. That, without question, is the correct views. Thank you for listening, friends. Again, please donate if you can at the correct views on hotmail.com through PayPal. And like I said, if you guys got kids, you're so fortunate. Give them a great big hug and uh, keep them away from tainted cheese and nuclear mushrooms. Those are two um, foods that soak up radiation like a sponge. Look it up if you doubt me, friends. Good night. God bless. I have to get my top YouTube off.